What's up everybody, it's Joe Miller from the Dirty Burr Field. I am finally doing my, wig, my rig walk around. Uh, it's two years later. Uh, the truck, I've been wheeling 30 times, maybe just over 30 times with the truck since I built it. Uh, it did a 4,400 kilometer round trip down to uh, the Hammers. It was an epic trip. Drove down there, like I, I just can't be happier with Toyota in general. And this was the truck that I had wanted to build uh, after kind of getting into wheeling and building a, a truck, uh, 80, I had an 85 um, pickup that I had built and learned a bunch of things. And this was kind of the, I'm older now, I wanna build the truck that I wanna build, it took three years to build. And I, I have done like no maintenance to it. So this will be a bit ha more haggard than it was the day it rolled out of the garage. But I think that that might be a better testament to kind of, you know, how the Toyota recipe really works well. The recipe here is, uh, the, and how I wanted to build this was front three link with pan hard, coilovers, uh, BJ60 front diff. So you got the Land Cruiser 9.5. I'll get into that later. But BJ60 front diff, um, centered BJ60 rear diff. So you have the nice 9.5 inch center chunks because that was my weak link on my old truck was the 529s. And I wanted to run 40s. So I picked the lightest 40s I could, which are IROC, 39 and a half IROC, okay? Uh, dual cases, factory, uh, 21 spline inputs, um, chromo hub gears, IFS hub swap, but factory hub studs. And I'll talk about that later too. It's gonna be probably long and boring. That's why I avoided doing this video. But here it is, two years later, she's broken in and literally no maintenance. I think I did, uh, I checked the wheel bearings, uh, re retightened those and repacked those before I drove down to the Hammers um, from Vancouver, Canada, Vancouver Island. I'm in the Nanaimo, BC. So that was a 4,400 uh, kilometer round trip. I wanted to make sure my wheel bearings were good. Uh, I replaced the rear uh, um, uh, T-case output seal, which you saw for those of you that followed my trip down to the Hammers. I replaced the transmission. So these are like, common wear items not from trail abuse the one thing that did break was um i sheared my front hub studs and i'll talk about why that was a good thing and why i prefer to deal with that uh, over uh, stuff that gets a little more nasty but that is it i couldn't be more happy 30 wheeling trips it's, it's literally something that has sat outside for months on end i hop hop in it start it up and go um, i have broken a front I've sheared my front hub studs. That's what I've broken, okay? Lots of fun has been had in this. Re like literally zero maintenance. I top it up with oil. Um, that's it, I, I haven't had the front end apart. It needs a good going over, don't get me wrong. But that's how you get to shit box status. And that's why so many Toyotas are shit boxes because they just keep on going. You can wheel the shit out of it and then put it away and come back the next weekend or a month later, wheel the shit out of it, and we're terrible for doing maintenance because the maintenance doesn't actually have to be done. Like, it's pretty, pretty wild. Just keep things tight. And uh, anyways, that's just me ranting on how awesome I think Toyotas are. But the recipe is gold, and it doesn't actually cost that much. The nice thing about Toyotas, too, that I love is you can't just bolt this shit on. So when you see someone with a built toy, you know that they probably know something about their junk they know something about fabricating something about keeping like how to put their truck together if it breaks on the trail that kind of thing okay let's get into it feel free to skip along as i ramble but here it is long overdue two years overdue let's get to it let's start on the front end i've been trying to figure out how to structure this walkthrough but uh, let's do the front end first um, we got a land cruiser bj60 front diff so that's the nine and a half um center piece which has a ring ring gear that's uh they say as big as a dan 60. yes it's got a smaller pinion uh size but i just i have had uh 529s and the eight inch and toyota v6 uh eight inch diffs and never had any luck with like had good luck with 37s but was blowing up my 529s with 37s and uh, that's why I wanted to upgrade to the bigger diffs because um, 
I just didn't want to deal with uh, broken ring and pinions. It sucks and it gets expensive real quick, especially if you're geared uh, up to 529s. So there it is. It's hard to tell unless it's side by side, but the Land Cruiser diffs are significantly bigger. There's my square front dry shaft and I have hydro assist. It's just a trail gear hydro assist um, with the, I got this from, I think I bought that at North, Northwest Fab. It's just the bolt on, um, <clears throat> bolt on tube clamp. And then I welded the trail gear um, bracket to that. So that's the front end. See, it's beat. It's not looking clean. My steering box is leaking. That's why you have all those screeches because there's air getting into it. But that's the front end, okay? So uh, a BJ60 Land Cruiser, uh, front diff, and then obviously I've gusseted it and put trusses on it and put all my link bracketry on it. Everything is really tight in here. You can see kind of the, the clearances are, um, everything's pretty close in here, okay? This is my awesome setup for my limit strap. It works. And my bump stop in here nothing touches it's close but nothing actually touches or binds okay and there's you can see my bump stop is used quite a bit okay there it is and then this was all fully tubbed out in here let's see if we get that Okay, so you can actually see where I still rub. So I tried to keep this as low as possible. Um, and what's interesting is I don't actually see very many people having to tub this out. And so, like I had to tub it out, you can see that my tire, when it's fully stuffed, is touching here. The factory kind of body where it comes in here and then goes up here. So I have a really, really good approach angle, which I was super excited about. I kept my winch really low profile um, to keep my departure angle really tight. And then that's all welded to the frame. There's quarter inch plate, um, quarter inch C-channel that's gusseted uh, or that goes around the factory um, front cross member. And it's all super beef back in there. If you dig through my Instagram, you can see all those photos. This is all hacked out to, for clearance. I had to push my steering box forward, so I had to hack all that out. And uh, let me get into here. There's my power steering fluid cooler, my rad. And those are just the regular old four stud high steer arms. I have no problems with them. Um, I just don't drive like an idiot. Uh, not to say that those of you that have upgraded do, but I make sure they're tight. Um, I have a welded front diff, so it's super hard on stuff. My weak link, so there's Chromo uh, long field, trail gear long fields, uh, right when they bought long field. Um, they click like crazy, but they haven't blown up on me, and I'm running 40s. Well, 39 and a half. I really like the IROC tires, mainly because they're super light. If you actually look at the weights of a 39 and a half IROC, uh, they are one of the lightest tires out there. And I don't run beadlocks. Um, I just, I've had really good luck running an eight inch rim or a nine inch rim on a 12 inch or wider tire. These are 13 and a half wide. And so that's the front end. These, I actually keep the factory um, hub studs. So you can mod that. The reason I do that is because at the end of the day, if you blow your hub and you shear your hub studs, I also have, it's an IFS hub conversion, um, which I think you'll be able to see the spacer bracket in here. Let's see, can you get in? Oh no, you won't be able to see that from in here. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see if we, we can focus in on that. So it's hard for you to tell, but that's a spacer bracket. I'm just gonna get my finger in here. And Sky Off-Road used to sell those. This thing right here, from here to here, that's a spacer that spaces um, the disc brake back so that it bolts up to the factory ears. That crap. 
And so you don't actually have to do any uh, machining of the ears uh, or re-drilling. Everything bolts up. The reason why I have that and why I like it is because then I can run factory IFS hubs, which are still dime a dozen. Like I can find factory IFS hubs all day long. The reason why I keep the factory hub studs is because that's my fuse. If you think about a day ender, okay, let's say I do the hub stud mod and put in the, uh, the 17 mil hub studs, okay, drill it out, put in the 17 mil hub studs or 19 mil, I can't remember what they are, but beef up the hub studs, okay, I do that. Uh, or I do chromoly hub studs first, which they aren't, they're just factory IFS hub studs. Okay, now my next weak link is uh, either my berf or it's my 21 spline T case, okay? I would much rather have uh, my hubs blow and end my day, like shear my hub studs, which is like a $10 fix in a bit of time to get another factory uh, hub put in. Uh, I'd rather have that. I can steer to get home, right? Doesn't, there's no issue. I'm three wheel drive which is fine, usually to get out of almost anywhere. And it doesn't ruin, like, it doesn't put the truck out for like a week and it makes getting home easy. I don't need to pull apart the front end to pull the berf out. I don't have any broken axle gears or seals messed up. It's like, just get it home, put a new hub in, new wheel bearings, transfer that spacer over. It's like really a non-issue, okay? And the factory hub studs have been pretty good. Like I said, I run IROX. I try to keep things pretty light. I like light rotational mass. Uh, I feel like that's a good recipe if you're gonna run uh, 40s. As you notice, I don't have stickies. I'm avoiding going to stickies because I'm pretty sure I'll start blowing stuff up all the time. And I'm fine, I still have plenty of fun wheeling stuff and I still have tons of challenging spots that are still fun, like not annoyingly challenging in this truck. Uh, flat pitman arm and then frames all gusseted um, I think those are just trail gear frame plates. This is a two-wheel drive uh, 91 pickup. The frame rails actually go up, uh, which let you have a lot more clearance. And you can actually see, we'll get in under here, that it, I had no frame clearance problems because it rises up. But if you look there, I actually had oil pan clearance problems. And that's a, let's see if we can get in here. Can you see that? Uh, there we go. I had to cut and clearance that oil pan. Let's see if we can get the focus there. Let's get up in here. Oh, there you go. You can see my clearance oil pan right in there. And no leaks. First 22 RE I've ever had that has no leaks because I used Toyota uh, oil pan gasket sealer. Stuff is amazing. I hear the right stuff is kind of the same, um, but I, for Toyota oil pans and uh, differentials, sealing the third to the axle housing, use the Toyota gasket sealer. It's like a little expensive, but totally worth it. You can see I rub, okay? Uh, so it's three link with pan hard and coilovers. Let's see if this is, I just wanna make sure this is focusing. There we go, three link. So there's one link, two link on the other side, third link up at the top diff, and then the pan hard. I kept a nice, nice line, tried to keep it as close as I could to be the same as the steering. And if you kind of like look, if you see in my videos, pan hard does a really nice job at following almost exactly the same as the uh, uh, tie rod or drag link. Okay, there's the front end. And those bump stops suck, they're super hard. I'd like to upgrade those at some point. But there she be, hydro assist, trail gear ram, and that's my Toyota square front shaft, which works money. I have a hat to vid on how I did that. Uh, in terms of my link ends, these things are awesome. I got these, um, these are 7 eighths Himes from Rough Stuff, 
with uh, five eighths um, high clearance or high tolerance uh, insert on them. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, no play in them. They're still super tight. And I've been really, really happy with them. Like, like there's like zero play. And I haven't been, haven't been kind to them. I was wondering how they're going to work because there's a lot more expensive options out there and I couldn't be happier with those. All right, so let's go to the middle. Uh, coilovers are um, used Fox 2.0 coilovers that I found. The middle here is a Sky Manufacturing um, modified dual transfer case skid plate, which they don't make anymore, and I really wish they did, because it was it actually made mounting making this mount super easy. Because the way the Sky Manufacturing um, ones work is they actually have this plate that would like go across here on a factory four x four, those two wheel drive, remember? So there was no T-case uh, mounting holes. It, the two wheel drive um, cross member is welded to the frame, so you gotta cut it out. But what was really cool with this is that I could just take the plates that normally went here that you'd bolt the um, skid plate to, and I just cut those plates, I just held them up, I like jacked up the whole thing, mounted, and I let the plate sit on the frame, and I just marked the inside. And then that is how I built my, let's see, might not be able to see that from in here. You can see my, oh yeah, hey, you can kind of see it back in there. Let's get around here to this other side. This gimbal is actually super helpful. Oh, there we go. So there, okay. I just weld it up inside frame bracket and then you can see uh, I inboarded as best possible my lower links and I tried to use a trail gear housing for this but it didn't work at all and I'm kind of bummed that um, Sky Manufacturing doesn't make this anymore because it made things super super easy. Okay here's my upper link mount and so I'll show you this here some people might be wondering how this kind of system works uh, okay so there's link number one and you can see it goes past it go actually mounts behind uh, where the t case um, skid plate mounts and then over here is how my link setup works so same thing, same spot, imported as much as I could, okay? And then my upper link mount, I had this, uh, I bought from Ballistic Fab, I think is where I bought all my brackets from, just generic stuff, and I had it, I had this thing. So I didn't know what my geometry was gonna be like, and I wanted some adjustability, so my, that's my upper link mount. And I've had no problems with this geometry. It doesn't do any weird stuff. That's what I was super scared about um, when I built the three link. It was on my bucket list to build a linked uh, front suspension by myself. And I had seen some three links do some really janky shit on the trail um, and heard that they were atrocious on the road if you did them wrong. I got to say, I am super, super happy with this. Um, I can measure my lowers. Uh, and my uppers, I think they're in my build thread on Pirate somewhere, but I essentially, I knew the four-wheel underground kit was super awesome. I didn't have the money to uh, actually buy that kit. And so what I did is they have the measurements of their lowers on the site and their upper, and I just tried to get kind of as close as I could to those numbers. And what ends up happening is you have pretty long lowers, and apparently that's, uh, that's what you want. So let's just back up here so you can actually see where the lowers come in at. So you can see where the, 
the TK mount is. And then that those lower links are quite a ways behind it. I had to notch out the uh, skid plate a little bit just to make sure it all worked. But really happy with it. It doesn't do any janky weird shit. I ended up boxing them in. That's all. This was all made by me. This 3 8 plate uh, that I just had a shop bend. And then I had to, the frame kind of bend, so I had to cut it here and uh, adjust that a bit. But there it is. It's my shitty welds. Ugh. No weld porn here on this. I hate welding sliders. Uh, you can do the circles, but yeah, anyways, those are there. Okay, there's the tea case. Big shout out to Dinny Graham for my tranny that uh, he got me. Super grateful for that. This is the freaking output seal on my trip to the hammers when I drove this down the, that I replaced like three times until I got a Toyota factory rear housing or rear seal which seals it up mint, no problems driving all the way um, that halfway back down to the hammers and all the way back up. This is the trail gear rear disconnect, which is not connected. This has literally just been a shiny piece of <laughs> display on the back of my truck. Um, it has no, I have no onboard air. When I reviewed that compressor, my plan was actually just to put a small tank here and then fill it up to like 100 PSI. And then just have a manual switch to this uh, disconnect. I really only have this rear disconnect for snow wheeling uh, and turning around on really loose stuff. I have no hopes that with 40s and my front, um, that my front diff will stay together. There's my rear shaft that my buddy made uh, that we actually made with pieces of his old one after I had bent my you know thin wall factory one that that I was told was thick wall by the drive shop, shop shaft here. Um, never going to that guy again. But this thing has been money, 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 money. And here is my sweet Toyota FJ Cruiser muffler. <laughs> if you guys are wondering, it's a freaking behemoth, but I thought it was so cool. I got it for super cheap. Uh, I don't mind the sound of it. I occasionally get it tagged here and because I don't have it welded, there's a pipe clamp here or an exhaust clamp here, an exhaust clamp there. And it actually sometimes tags right here and it, and it uh, pulls out the exhaust. I've had that a couple times. I just put a new clamp on there. At some point, I just need to get in there and weld it up. But right now I don't have a garage because uh, we're building and onto the rear diff. Okay, so rear diff. This was a super fun project for me. Uh, so it's a, I took a, I took the factory BJ60 rear diff, cut it down, and then I took um, solid axle, a solid axle rear housing, the outers, cut those off, and those fit inside the Land Cruiser tubes. Okay, so you cut them center, I had a centering beam that went through um, where the carrier bearings are and that held everything centered and then I welded them up and then I actually took the leftovers of um, the, the long side that I cut off to center the um, rear axle housing and I ended up putting those on and welding those as a sleeve over the um, solid axle small tubes so it actually looks as if it's just a factory rear diff and you'll do the double take if you're driving behind me because you'll think it's a Toyota diff but then you'll see the removal diff cover uh, which I got from rough stuff okay these are Chevy 63s in the rear Bilstein's in the back I'm just gonna swing around to the other side so I can talk about the disc brake setup um, two-wheel drives don't have uh, skid plate on the gas tank. I tried so many skid plates and was trying to figure out why none would fit. So I actually uh, had to get one, cut it in half, um, shorten it, and it's welded on inside and outside. It's actually kind of nice because there's like eight inches in there where it's double plated. And then I just tapped some holes 
uh, for this front mount. And then on the back, um, it actually ended up mounting. So the back would mount up, which was cool, uh, but then the front, nothing was mounting on that front. Uh, so I just had to cut it down to fit and then drilled and tapped the holes for that. Okay, you'll notice my e-brake was set up. So let's go around and talk about that. Okay, so these are my discs. Subaru Loyal front discs and Mitsubishi, or sorry, front calipers with integrated e-brake. Not set up right now, but this is the integrated e-brake and that was looped around, hooks right up here. And then I had factory e-brake, except for I had to like add the four wheel drive e-brake stuff because two wheel drive. But if you had a four wheel drive, you could put these on and then they are floating calipers. So it, they were like super easy to mount. That means they floating calipers uh, will grab like this and they're not solid mounted on one side, kind of going like that. So that actually made mounting them pretty easy. This was like one of my most exciting things. Mitsubishi Montero Sport discs and then Subaru Loyal front disc brake calipers. I bought it all off Rock Auto. I think it cost me like 300 bucks. And then I had to um, shop Big Country Customs out here. Shout out to Taryn, my man. Um, I took the measurements and he made the brackets for me. Cut them out. Okay. There we go. That's the rear. There's the rough stuff. Land Cruiser housing diff cover. And diff breathers. Shackles, all that kind of regular stuff. Chevy 63 swap. Nothing unique about that. So there it is. Factory 22RE. I can show you under the hood, but I'd have to climb in. 22RE and then my tube work. Uh, you can actually look at the introduction video to the channel. And that has kind of all my tube work. I take the fenders off and my tube work runs all in here. I'm a huge fan of rectangle or square rock sliders. You can see how haggard these are. So this is a three inch, um, or no, four inch by two inch, uh, one eighth wall. And the reason they're one eighth wall is so that you get the nice square look. Okay. I really like the square look. If you go by like a two by four, the court and quarter wall, it ends up having this really round radius on the bend. And what I did is I just took another uh, piece of 1 8 angle iron and I put it on here, cut the ends to fit, and then I welded all along here. So effectively, this is quarter wall right here. You can probably see it underneath. So you can see the lip. There's the lip of where it's 1 8 wall and then the quarter wall. And you can see how beat these are and why I added that extra one eighth angle on the ends was because these take a beating. But I've always found that DOM, whatever your sliders are made out of, if they're round, they get absolutely trashed and they start looking like garbage. Whereas the rectangle or square tube sliders still look pretty awesome. They don't it's just not as noticeable when they get beat up. And if I wanted to, I could take a flat disc and I could smooth all those out. But this is a huge wear item. And I hate round tube in these parts. When I build my buggy, the lower base is going to be square rectangle tube. It's not going to be round tube. It drives me nuts and I really like the look of it. I moved the box back two inches. Okay, so this is a uh, factory four by four um, third gen box. Let's see if we can get up in here to see. Yeah, there you go. So all I did was relocate. I just welded on a plate that relocated the box back two inches, which worked out really well because 
then I was able, can you see that in there? Let's see if we can get it bright. Uh, you probably can't see it. Let's, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, it's kind of out of focus, but you can see that I'm cross braced fully on the back end. It's cross braced fully down to the frame. And what's cool about those relocation brackets is that I can take a factory box, uh, plunk it on, and all I have to do is bob the rear again, and then I just cut out uh, this part. So I literally can probably have a brand new box on this in a weekend. Um, new box, bob it, and then I literally just have to cut this out and a factory rear box bobbed will bolt right on. I don't have to mess around with the mounts or anything weird like that. So I'm pretty excited about that because as haggard as it can get, as it gets, uh, I can replace doors, front fenders, and the box. And at any given moment, as I choose, I could have this thing uh, cleaned up and looking pretty nice. My goal with this build was to have something that I could park in the garage so it was low uh, low center of gravity. I wanted something that was streetable at the time. Um, and where we live, we have these things called vehicle inspections. Like I look at you guys in California and what you get away with driving on the road. That's amazing. But we need to have our tires covered by fenders, fender flares. We can't have any tire poke out the side. Um, we have vehicle inspections so we can get pulled over by uh, the police and be told to get a vehicle inspection. And so the cleaner your rig looks, the less likely you'll get a vehicle inspection. So I wanted to have something where I could take my fenders off, my doors off, and go wheel. You know, if I was wheeling the hard stuff, where I was cramming through trees, uh, or if there was a lot of rocks, I wanted to be able to pop all my fenders, my doors back on, and have it look pretty clean. So if you look at it, it's still a clean truck in terms of bodywork on the front end. Back end's another story. It needs a good freshen up, but I'm building. This is where I'm building. This is our lot. And I have no garage. We're renting right now as we build. And so this is where the house will sit. The nice thing is that right outside the back door here is uh, my wheeling access to it right away. So I don't actually have to trailer my rig anywhere. Um, I'm not too worried about how it is on the street. I'm not keeping it tip-top shape for that because it's really just in the bush. So there you have it. That's it. That's my truck. I'm a big fan of it. It's done so well for me. Super happy with it. And I'll probably just leave it the way it is until I get to start a buggy build. I always want something that was like street friendly. This is going to stay that way. I'm not going to do the classic hack it apart into something that just kind of not isn't shitty for rock crawling like hardcore wheeling but the reality is that the body is what gets in the way and the weight is what gets in the way of a toyota in terms of you know that's my opinion so i'd rather just keep this streetable uh truck that's you know pretty well rounded um and then build a dedicated rock crawler all right Hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want some wheeling videos, check your top right. Peace.